So today we're going to be talking about the ESPN way too early top 10 rankings for men's basketball. I'm going to do it similar to the way that I did the women's side in that I'm going to break it up into two parts. This part one will be teams ranked six through 10. And then later today, I will have part two, which is going to be those teams ranked one through five. That's going to be pretty much the only similarities between the women's side and the men's side because the men's side is completely different. I mean, at the end of March Madness, they should take all the players, toss them in the air and see where they land, because that's kind of the nature of it here. The better players are going to head off to the NBA and the transfer portal is going to be stacked with players looking for new homes. Also, the top players are usually one and doneers. And just because they are a top recruit, it doesn't mean their team is going to be any better. The top recruit out of the 2023 class was Isaiah Collier, and he went to USC, who did not even make it to the playoffs. And after that, Kentucky had, I believe, three players in the top 10. Kentucky got beaten by Oakland. Yeah, Oakland. <laughs> had everybody's brackets completely screwed, and Kentucky fans lost their... <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go ahead and play the intro, and then we're going to get into it. Hi, and welcome to Davis Sports Report. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Number 10 is North Carolina Tar Heels. The Tar Heels had quite a few players returning this year, including their superstar, R.J. Davis. Davis averaged 21.2 points and 3.6 rebounds per game last year. Also returning is Elliot Cadeau, who was on our freshman to watch list last year. Cadeau averaged 7.3 points per game and 2.2 rebounds, and we do expect greater things from Cadeau this year. Others returning that helped the Tar Heels last year are Seth Trimble, Jalen Withers, and Jalen Washington. Coming in from the transfer portal is Cade Tyson. He's coming in from Belmont. He's one that you don't want to leave open at the three-point line. Tyson averaged 16.2 points per game and 5.9 rebounds. Also, then Ellen Lubin coming from Vanderbilt. He averaged 12.3 points per game and 6.3 rebounds. The Tar Heels are also getting Ty Claude from Georgia Tech and Elijah Davis from University of Lynchburg, averaging 7.3 points per game, 1.3 rebounds, and Elijah is the son of head coach Hubert Davis. Freshmen joining the Tar Heels are seventh ranked Ian Jackson, a six foot four small forward. He looks to be a great offensive player, but I didn't see any defensive highlights. Also, 14th ranked Drake Howell. He is a six foot five shooting guard, and I think he is going to be the freshman breakout for this year. And I don't say that because I think he's better than the other players, but I do think he's going to provide them that defense that they need um, to be able to contend with other players. So I think he's going to do very well. And we also have number 69, James Brown. He is a six foot eight power forward that looks to be great in the post and can help fill the gaps that are left. Also, they are getting John Holbrook, a six foot eight forward that was a walk on, and I wasn't able to find any highlights on him, so I'm not really sure what he's gonna bring to the table. So, in summary, UNC lost their big man, Armando Bacot. He is now in the NBA, and he was the top rebounder, and he scored in the double digits. Just behind him was Harrison Ingram, who was also drafted last year. And they lost sophomore Zayden High, their six foot nine power forward that was projected to have a starting position this year. He unenrolled from UNC and we don't know why. So UNC barely lost to Alabama in the March Madness Sweet 16 and I don't feel like they got better this year. In order for the Tar Heels to excel, they would need one of their big men to fill the cot shoes on the defensive side. And I'm not sure that they have that in their roster. I'm not saying that the Tar Heels are going to be bad this year, but I don't think they should be ranked number 10. And for that reason, I am giving this prediction a thumbs down. Moving on. Number nine is the Arizona Wildcats. Arizona has a ton of returning players, most of them sophomores, which is a good thing. Uh, coming back from last year is their high scorer, Caleb Love, that averaged 18 points per game and 4.8 rebounds. 
Like UNC, he is the only returning player that averaged in the double digits. Also returning is Jaden Bradley that averaged seven points per game and 2.4 rebounds. KJ Lewis that averaged 6.1 points per game and 3.1 rebounds. As well as seven foot two sophomore center, Motijas Crevis, who averaged 5.4 points per game and 4.2 rebounds with an average of 12 minutes per game. So we expect to see him play a much larger role this year. Coming in from the transfer portal is Anthony Del Orso. He's transferring from Campbell, averaging 19.5 points per game and 6.5 rebounds. He is great from anywhere on the court and he is ice cold at the 3.9. I do want to mention this though, just because you're balling out of control in D3 does not mean that's going to translate in D1. Also coming in is Trey Townsend from Oakland. You know, the team that put Kentucky out. Townsend is a six foot six forward that averaged 17.3 points per game and 8.1 rebounds per game. He's fast and will make his way to the basket. The turnaround jumper is on point and he is great defensively. They also have Liam Lloyd that transferred from Northern Arizona, averaging 6.2 points per game and 4.3 rebounds. Also coming in from the transfer portal is Toby Awaka and Jackson Francois from Missouri. The freshman coming in is 20th ranked six foot eight Carter Bryant, and he does it all. Outside, inside, rebound, and he kills it at the three point line. I expect to see him on the court right away. Also, 96th ranked six foot nine center, Emmanuel Stephen. He's gonna be the big guy that can get those blocks on the defensive side, and he will just need to make sure he doesn't get in foul trouble. They are also getting a walk-on from France, and that is six foot one point guard, seven Jopmo. In summary, the Wildcats lost their leading rebounder, Umar Ballo, in the transfer portal, as well as their point guard, Kylan Boswell, not returning due to the NBA, or Pelle Larson, that's now playing for Miami Heat along with fellow Kashad Johnson. Larson led the team in assists. That's a lot of players that have departed, but I think they can make up for the losses. Therefore, ranking the Wildcats number nine, I am gonna give that a thumbs up. Coming in at number eight is the Duke Blue Devils. So I can't hold my comments to the end. I personally think that Duke should be ranked in the top three, and we are going to discuss why. Let's go. While Duke did lose a lot, they lost uh, Filipowski and point guard Jared McCain to the NBA. They do have returning players. They have Tyrese Proctor, who averaged 10.5 points per game, three rebounds per game, and 3.7 assists, and Caleb Foster, that averaged 7.7 points per game and 2.4 rebounds. Coming in from the transfer portal is Sion James coming from Tulane, averaging 14 points per game and 5.5, 5.4 rebounds. And Malik Brown from Syracuse, who is averaging 9.5 points per game and 7.2 rebounds. And I watched his highlights and he is going to make his way to the basket no matter what. Also coming in is Cameron Sheffield from Rice. He is averaging 7.6 points per game, 6.1 rebounds, and this is one that you do not want to give space on the three-point line because he is going to light it up. I think he was a great pick for the Blue Devils. And lastly is Mason Gillis from Purdue. He averages 6.5 points per game, 3.9 rebounds. Coming in from the recruiting class is number one ranked six foot nine small forward Cooper Flagg. And this young man has been on the scene and showed that he can play with the best when he suited up for the Nike Hoop Summit in the World Against USA game. He's basically unstoppable and is likely to be a one and dunner, but I know that Duke's gonna get the best out of him the one year that they do have him. Also coming in is number 15 ranked, six foot seven forward Isaiah Evans. He's a little bit slim, but he's got some fight in him. And 19th ranked, six foot five shooting guard, Khan Nupel, the three point sniper. He will add a lot to the Blue Devils also. And number 26 ranked, six foot 10 sitter, Patrick Gangba. And he played in the FIBA U18, where they made easy work of their competition. 
Also coming in is number 31 ranked six foot four shooting guard, Darren Harris, and boy, can he shoot. He may very well replace Jared McCain. And last but not least, Coming from South Sudan is seven foot two, Kamen Malut. You know, the team that put the scare in the Team USA during the Olympics. Well, at seven foot two, and he is quite dynamic. I mean, what, what is anybody gonna get past him, right? Nothing, absolutely nothing. He is blocking everything that's coming his way. And he can shoot. So in summary, the Blue Devils also lost Jeremy Roach, who transferred to Baylor, and Mark Mitchell heading to Missouri. But I feel like the Blue Devils absolutely filled the gaps left behind, and they added depth. So I'm going to give this ranking of number eight a thumbs down, as I feel like Duke should have ranked much higher, as I said, probably in the top three. Coming in at number seven is Iowa State Cyclones. Returning for Iowa State is last year's four top scorers. First is Keyshawn Gilbert, averaging 13.7 points per game, 4.4 rebounds, and 4.2 assists. Also is Taman Lipsy, averaging 12.4 points per game, 4.6 rebounds, and 4.9 assists. Curtis Jones, averaging 11 points per game and 2.2 rebounds per game, and Mylon Monsilovic, the sophomore that impressed us last year, and we expect growth from him this year. He averaged 10.9 points per game, 3.1 rebounds, and that is four players in the double digits that are returning for the Cyclones. Coming in from the transfer portal is starting with Nate Heisey. He's coming from Northern Iowa, averaging 13.5 points per game and 6.1 rebounds. He's another shooter that will help with moving the ball and getting the buckets. Also, 6'11 center Deshaun Jackson coming from Charlotte, averaging 11.4 points per game and 6.1 rebounds. And he is the type of big man that's going to be an asset to any team. Honestly, between him and Momsilovic, they got the rim covered. Next is Joshua Jefferson, transferring from St. Mary's, averaging 10.2 points per game and 6.5 rebounds, who's a ball mover and shooter. He's shooting at 46.9 field goal percentage. He's a sophomore, so he might be the backup this year, but who knows? And lastly is Brandon Chatsville, a 6'10 senior coming from Seattle, averaging 9.4 points per game and 5.4 rebounds. And for the freshmen, it looks like Iowa State is only getting one freshman, and that would be 70th ranked, six foot four shooting guard, Nojis Andrasadis. That can help with spreading the court because he is deadly from the three point line. In summary, Iowa State went into March Madness ranked number two out of the East Division, and they had a very close loss to number three Illinois in Sweet 16. Considering that Iowa State has so much on their team coming back, had a record of 29 and eight last year, I'm expecting them to be even better this year. So I think ranking them number seven is a good ranking. So I am giving that ranking a thumbs up. Let's move right along. Number six is Baylor Bears. The major contributors returning to the Bears are Langston Love, averaging 11 points per game and 2.9 rebounds, Jaden Nunn, averaging 10.5 points per game, 2.6 rebounds, and Josh Ojinwana, averaging 4.9 points per game and 3.4 rebounds. This is not looking so good for the Bears so far. Transferring in from the portal are six foot seven, Norchard Omir, transferring from University of Miami, averaging 17 points per game, and 10 rebounds per game. I mean, it's the rebounds for me. They desperately needed a player that could get the rebounds and they got one. He's going to be a great fit. Also coming in is Jeremy Roach, transferring from Duke, averaging 14 points per game, 2.5 rebounds and 3.3 assists. Also, Jalen Celestine, transferring from California, averaging 8.7 points per game, 3.2 rebounds per game. And when he's hot at the three, he is hot. 
And lastly is Davidson Hubbard, that's transferring from Hampton Sydney College, where he averaged 14.9 points per game, shooting at around 50% field goal percentage, 75 from the free throw, and an average of 7.3 rebounds. While this is all impressive, I'm not sure that it's going to translate to a D1 school. And coming in from the recruiting class is number three ranked BJ Edgecombe. And this guy is flipping Superman. I mean, he is high flying. And I really hope Baylor allows him to bring that same high energy into the college level because I will be tuned in. Also coming in is number 24 ranked six foot point guard, Robert Wright III. And he's got ball handling skill, shooting, and he shares the ball effortlessly. So he is gonna be a great pickup for Baylor. Also is number 51 ranked six foot seven small forward, Jason Esamato. Another great pickup that will make a difference both on the offensive and defensive end. And don't let the size fool you, he can hit those three pointers. And coming from Croatia is six foot nine center Marino Dabrovic that played in the FIBA U20 for his country where he averaged 5.2 points per game and 4.7 rebounds. He is a big that can get the rebounds and turn them into buckets. And the thing I was most impressed with about him is this guy can move. I mean, a lot of times you have your big men that are a little bit slower than everyone else, but this guy can go. He reminds me a lot of Zach Eadie. So in summary, Baylor made it to the Sweet 16 last year, but lost to Clemson. Baylor lost their top everything, score, rebounder, assist, blocks, everything. They have some great shooters coming in, but my concern is the defensive side. It's looking like Nortrud Omir, along with Marino Dubovic, can fill the gap. So I think I'm going to go ahead and give this ranking a thumbs up. Baylor should be exciting to watch this year. So that's going to be it for the teams ranked 10 through 6. Remember, I will be dropping another video of the teams 1 through 5. Please hit me up in the comment section and let me know how you felt about those rankings. Do you think ESPN was right or yeah, not so much? <laughs> also, shout out your team. Let me know where you're from, who your favorite team is, and I will see you back here really soon. Remember, if you didn't already thumbs up the video, Please do so now and I will see you soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.